Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from um, Carl Milbrod, N4KCM. And he says, you say every antenna is a dipole. Not every antenna, but I'll tell you what, most have some recognizable heritage to a dipole. If a half of um, a dipole is a screwdriver antenna with a big coil and whip, can the counterpoise be large coils and wires? Well, let's look at a screwdriver antenna. A screwdriver antenna is a whip, and then there is in here a coil. And there is next to it a screw, just a long screw, and there is a tap mechanism to the coil. Okay, so um, if you turn the motor, which is down here, it'll move that tap up and down that coil until it gets to the point where this thing is resonant. Now, these work. They're often used in mobile installations. They're obviously verticals. Okay. Now, what do you use down here? Well, it's usually connected to the vehicle upon which it is mounted. And there are lots of little things that you need to do, like make sure the various metal parts of the body are all securely um, connected to each other for DC for RF purposes. Okay, and then this box goes to a controller and these controllers can be as simple as an up-down switch or as uh, exotic as something you connect to the transmitter and it'll be automatic. Now the screwdriver is a really wonderful antenna it works very well. It acts like a full-size vertical. It really does. However, note that it is heavily loaded, which means it has high Q. Now, I won't explain everything about Q. It's the quality factor. It's a, a scalar. It has no units, but it's basically, it will tell you that if you have a high Q, you'll have a very narrow bandwidth on this thing. So we'll, we'll operate on the bandwidth that you, on the band that you've tuned it to only a few kilohertz either side of the uh, frequency that you are using. It worked very well at that frequency, but if you go very far away from it, you've got to tweak the tuning on it, okay? Now he sounds here like he wants to use this as a portable antenna. I have other recommendations for portable antenna. Um, you can try, uh, there's the buddy pole, buddy pole, which is a vertical antenna with long wire counterpoise, or the buddy stick. Okay, this is a vertical antenna. This has got two halves of it out there. I've got one of these. They work. Um, they're a compromise antenna, but they work well. Another thing that you can do is you can, if you have a vehicle, and I'll just show the back of the vehicle here, and uh, you put on one of these what are called ham sticks. And they come for different bands, 80 through 10, and usually a ham stick, once you get it tuned, will cover much of the band, like the whole voice portion or the general portion or something like that. Again, they're high Q devices. Okay, this is the easiest way to go because you can set one of these on a pole here and just stick it out there and, and make it work and that's pretty easy uh, for your antenna and you can throw some radials down. There's also something called a super antenna which is specifically designed to be portable it's got a vertical part here with a coil and 
a, a, a guide over here for where to tap it for different frequencies, and it's got a big spreaders out here that act as the counterpoise. Okay, so that's another one that you can look at. But if you want to use your screwdriver, you certainly can. And he's asking what to do uh, with the counterpoise. Okay, um, okay, it's the most time. Uh, which end is more efficient for? Okay, you don't want to coil up counterpoise wire because what you're doing is creating an inductance. You want your wire, if you've got your screwdriver antenna here, and it's got a wire going over to the controller so you can change the length, and it's got a coax going to the radio, and then it's got some sort of a counterpoise. Usually this connects to the vehicle frame. But if you don't have a vehicle frame, you're going to have to run some radials out on the thing, okay? If you don't have a lot of room, run short radials out. Um, when we built the uh, DX Commander antenna, we opted for 10-foot radials. We had quite a few of them, 30-some-odd 10-foot radials. I was amazed how well that thing worked. Okay, so you can do that too. You can make your radials fairly short and just put lots of them out there. There is no magic length for a radial. Okay, no magic length for a radial. It used to be that, by golly, your radials needed to be quarter wave. Uh, and if you do put an antenna in the air, you don't need so many radials, but you do need tuned radials. But when it's on the ground, you don't need tuned radials. For radials, I recommend insulated wire, okay, and little uh, lugs on the end of them so you can just attach them very easily to your uh, little um, ground wherever your ground connection is on this thing over here. Okay, so uh, don't coil up the counterpoise wire because you're going to make uh, uh, an inductor out of it. Um, will that keep it from working? I don't know, but I don't think so. Um, there are antennas like the Buddy Stick that only have one radial, and they say it's wonderful. It's not. You want to have more radials. I'd take their long radial and cut it into several, and you'd be better off. Um, but anyway, there you go. So yes, you can use a screwdriver antenna as a portable antenna. It's not designed to be used as a portable antenna. It's designed to be used as a mobile antenna. Okay, now the other things you can do with hamsticks, MFJ makes a little box, you can put a hamstick out here and a hamstick out here on the same band, and you've got the equivalent of a dipole, and it will work just as well radiation-wise as an ordinary dipole, even though it's shortened quite a bit. However, what you give up, there's, there's no free lunch. Everything affects everything in antennas. The Q is high, so the resonant area here will not cover the whole band, whereas a lower Q antenna will cover the whole band. Okay? So, anyway, enough said. I hope that's not too confusing. What I'm saying is if you're going to create a portable antenna, Look at something like the Buddy Stick, although that's expensive. If you already have a screwdriver antenna, yes, you can make that portable. You can set it out on the ground. Um, you might just get some aluminum poles to make sort of a cross kind of a thing and then use that uh, to mount your antenna. And then you'll have um, a counterpoise uh, for it. You're looking for a counterpoise. Okay, I would not recommend that if you're in a campsite that you drive a ground rod because there's no way you're going to get that ground rod out of the ground. It just can't be done. You'd need a, a gin pole and a heavy truck or uh, what I've seen the Army use is one of the old-fashioned uh, tow trucks that picks up the front of the vehicle and tows it uh, or picks up the back of the vehicle and tows it. Those pull straight up and they have a tremendous amount of pull and they will pull. A ground, ray, ground rod out of the ground. Okay, so now if you want to use the screwdriver on your camper, um, 
you can attach it just to the rear bumper or you can attach it to the side of the camper and then rotate it up when you're in your campground uh, so it would be here's your camper and there's your wheels wheels whatever see so you could attach it like to the side here and then when you're in the campground rotate it up and then use the body of the vehicle as the um, you know connect something down here to the body uh, to use the body of the vehicle as your counterpoise okay that would work too that way you don't have to do anything really weird or strange and if you're looking for some kind of connector or device to do that, the best source I know of for odd little things for antennas is DX Engineering. DX Engineering is one of the major ham radio retailers. That's DX Engineering.com. Tell them I sent you. And um, that ought to give you what you want. So if you do have a piece of counterpoise wire, lay it out in a random pattern, but don't have it cross itself. Uh, don't coil it up. Um, one of the problems with laying wires in the ground is a tripping hazard. I know people are not supposed to walk through your campsite. That's the rule in every campground I've ever been in, but people do. So... Um, just use the vehicle as the counterpoise. So there you have it. I hope something in there was helpful to you. And um, if you've gotten this far in the video, please subscribe. Please click like. Uh, check out decastlercom support for ways to support this channel and decastlercom slash giveaway for the month's giveaway. It changes every month. Uh, this month, it's April 2022. It's going to be a... Uh, PowerWorks SSDV30 power supply, SS30DV power supply. Till we next meet, 73.